Now, worship with us tonight.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you serve a God tonight that's everywhere? Aren't you glad you serve a God that's there regardless of any situation and every circumstance? Amen. The psalmist said when... Go ahead. I thought you were saying something, brother. I said amen. Oh, praise God. <laughs> praise God. We have plenty that need prayer tonight. But we all need prayer. Amen. We need to continue to pray for Sister Crudis. Amen. Sister Mills. Come on. Sister Bell. Yep. Where's that walker? God's working. She's moving up. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Pray for Sister Bishop. She's out today. Right. Right. We need to pray for Brother Hobson, Brother, Mew, Brother Hughes, Moses. Uh, Bobby Allen has cancer. Monica Hernandez. Brother and Sister Hunt, we're glad y'all are back. Amen. Amen. We need to continue to pray for the Lujan family that God gives them a peace in the Amen. loss of a loved one. Amen. We need to continue to pray for Sister Jones and her son Josh. Right. And we need to continue to pray for the nation of Israel. Amen. And we also need to continue to pray for the nation of the United States. Right. Amen. We need to turn our face toward God right now. In Jesus' name. If you have a need, by the lifting of your hand tonight, God knows every need. He knows every situation. I invite you to the altars today and let the, anoint, let the elders anoint you with oil in Jesus' name.
Praise God for the privilege and the avenue of prayer. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Where would we be, amen, without prayer? Praise God. Amen. Many of us are here because somebody prayed for us. Amen. Many people got their healing because someone interceded and prayed for them. Praise God. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible even says if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth liberally and upbraideth not. Praise God. Amen. We need wisdom today. Amen. Knowledge is one thing. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Wisdom and knowledge are not the same thing, but they run together like second cousins. They're parallel. Amen. They work on behalf of one another. Amen. We need, amen, knowledge, but we need the wisdom to use knowledge correctly. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for wisdom today. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, praise God. I'm glad there's not snow on the ground. I'm glad there's not frost on the pumpkin tonight. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just going to share this with you. Sister Crudis knows all about it, but I went to get a sandwich yesterday at United, just up the street, amen. And uh, so uh, while I was waiting on my sandwich to be prepared, there's a gentleman in there, and every time he sees me come in, he usually waits on me. He says, hey, boss. He says, what do you want? He don't know, amen, my situation at home, but praise God. I'm teasing. Praise the Lord. I felt good about that. And while he was preparing my sandwich, he meant one of the ladies that works there came up, and she saw me standing there, and she says, Sir, are you celebrating Halloween today? And I told her, I said, No, I look like this all the time. <laughs> and everybody behind that counter bust out laughing. She says, Oh, I didn't mean that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Praise God. Forgive me for hanging around Brother Hamilton too much. Praise God, amen. But I thought it was an appropriate response, amen. No, I look like this all the time. Praise God, amen. I guess my costume looked a little different. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Bishop showed up over there, amen. He saw people dressed up in different costumes, amen. He said, I came looking like a painter, <laughs> amen. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And there's a lot that uh, are not here tonight. Brother Lee has a head cold. Pray for him that he gets over that. That's why our screens, amen, are not working because there's no one in the back to plug in the screens and to run the dial. Praise God. If I get back there, I'll probably mess everything up. And the Nieveses are not here tonight. She called me and said, we have uh, no gas. Amen. I thought they meant in their car. And I said, well, put out your thumb. But she says, we have no gas in the house, and so we don't have no heat to take showers. Amen. And I wanted to just say, just come like you are. Praise God. Amen. But uh, anyways, so uh, they're without gas tonight, trying to get gas to their home so they can have some heat tonight. Praise God. And then um, we've got others that are not here. Sister Bishop. Amen. She's not feeling well. Uh, Aiden's not here tonight. He doesn't have an excuse. Now, Amber does, but Aiden doesn't. Praise God. So... I'm going to pick on Aiden on, on Sunday. He's got a lot of homework. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm going to give you all a lot of homework tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, just pray. Amen. There's different ones. Amen. We need to lift up in prayer people, amen, that need the Holy Ghost. Praise God. People that need an answer, amen. Praise the Lord. I've been going to the hospital praying for a gentleman by the name of Bobby Allen. And none of us, none of y'all know him. Um, I am acquainted with his sister. She has visited this church in times past a couple of times. She knows she needs to be in church. She told me, she said, Brother Crudis, every time, and she goes, I know I need to be in church, but every time that I get ready to, to go to church or think about going to church, she says, something else always comes up. And I said, yeah, something else will always come up, amen. If, if you're not careful, amen, praise God, you'll let things keep you out of the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And that's why, again, we have to be very, very careful. Because I'm going to tell you, faithfulness is required of the Lord. And I realize I'm preaching to the choir. Praise God. Amen. But you never know what you're going to miss from one service to another. Amen. Many of us in here need an answer from God. Uh, we need, we need um, healing from the Lord. We need God to intervene. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I just can't help but sometimes think, amen, that that God wants to work, but sometimes we limit the Lord. 
Amen. Praise God. God. God wants us to stand in the gap and to make up the hedge. God wants us to be that person. Amen. Praise God. That that He can use. Amen. To reach out to someone. Praise God. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Praise God. It's good to see Brother Good with us. Amen. Tonight he was he was so sick this past weekend, and uh, so we're we're continuing to pray. His surgery was Tuesday. Oh, they moved it to Friday. Well, I prayed all day Tuesday for him. I got up early in the morning, and Trent Trent is going in for knee surgery, and uh, it's a it's an outpatient surgery. And uh, so, my Lord, I prayed Monday night and all day Tuesday for that boy, and now he didn't even have surgery. So I'm praying he don't get surgery. I'm praying he don't even need surgery. Thanks for the late news. Praise God. Amen. Getting camel to sneeze just because of that boy. Praise God. Amen. Anyways, this gentleman, Bobby Allen, um, pray for him. And uh, they, they gave him three months to six months. Then they gave him three months. And now they're giving him just a couple of days. He's already uh, turned for the worse. Uh, he is at uh, hospice. And um, so um, it grieves my heart, amen, to watch someone, amen, take their last breath. And uh, the problem of it is we in the church, we know the difference, amen. There's a plan of salvation, and without the plan of salvation, unless you're truly born again of water and of the Spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible says, I believe it's Hebrews 9 and 27, it's once appointed unto men to die, and after this the judgment. And once you pass from this life, you can't come back and do what you didn't do or undo what you did. Amen. That's why, amen, we have to make every service count. In fact, amen, you need to be able to go to heaven from your last service. You need to make sure that your heart is right with God. Amen. We want to pray again for the Lujan family. There's a funeral. The viewing is on um, Friday from, I believe, 9, no, from, from 1 to 9 p.m., okay? And uh, that is at uh, the, the funeral home. No, angels, angels house, angel house, funeral home, okay, and so we'll find it, praise God, amen, and uh, Sister Rebecca gave me the information on my phone, and then on that sat the next day, Saturday, at 11 o'clock in the morning, is that right, okay, the funeral, and it is going to be at Agape Church, yeah, not funeral home, because there is a place out there called Agape Funeral Home, and that's not where it is. It's going to be the Agape Church, okay? And so uh, that's on Q. It's on Avenue Q. Is that right? Okay. And so, but but again, uh, you can call me tomorrow if you need the address. She gave it to me on my phone, amen, and I will be able to write it down and give it to everybody. Praise God. And uh, so let's not forget that. Amen. Praise God. And we want to... Uh, honor and respect the family and the loss of a loved one. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody got uh, a prayer request? Amen. That they would like for us to pray for someone? Amen. Yes, brother. Okay. Okay. Well, um, so they're doing a consult on a heart murmur on um, Skyler. Praise God. And uh, if I didn't know better, he's part of that mixed multitude that came out of Egypt because they were always murmuring. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to pray for Skylar that everything's okay. Sister Sutter. Okay. So we want to pray for Brother Watts. We want to pray for Brother Skylar. We've got, uh, he's had the flu. Okay, and then Brother Lee, and then there's different ones uh, tonight, praise God, amen, that are not here, the Nieveses. Why don't we just go ahead and go to the Lord again real quick in prayer, amen. Let's pray for the families, amen, and the loss of a loved one. Let's pray for those tonight that are sick, and uh, let's just lift them up. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you again for the privilege, Lord, that we have to come before you and to call upon your name. 
And God, that we can pray the prayer of faith, Lord Jesus, Lord, and stand in the gap for others. God, we pray right now, God, that you would minister, Lord, to every need that is presented in this house. God, you know the need, Lord, and it's by your grace, oh God, and by your power that you supply every need, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you again for this wonderful time and this privilege in the awesome and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. Praise God. So good again to, tonight to see Sister Michelle with us tonight. Sister Connie, good to have Connie with us tonight. Amen. Sister Jones, amen, still praying for Josh. Amen. Praise God. I pray for him every day. He's on our prayer list. Praise God. Amen. Brother Guzman, good to see you tonight. It's good to see Sister Schreiber tonight. Y'all pray for Sister Schreiber. She was at the dentist today. Amen. And they took out her wisdom teeth. No, I'm teasing. Praise God. But she had a procedure done today, and she still, she, or yesterday, and she didn't get any sleep last night. So she's in a lot of pain. And she said, Pastor, I may fall asleep during your preach. And I said, What's new? <laughs> Amen. But I'll just keep a songbook ready just in case. And we'll fling it over there. And Brother Guzman, he meant so good to see him. He worked a 13 hour day yesterday at the sonic amen because they had a special on hot um corn dogs and he didn't call me <laughs> his store alone sold 3300 corn dogs amen could have been 3301 but he didn't call me praise god amen and uh, i'm sure you're out now aren't you you guys don't have any in stock right now you do <laughs> well praise the lord Amen. What are you doing here? Why didn't you bring some? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Everybody, anybody here besides me love corn dogs? I like corn dogs. Amen. The way our world is going, I told Brother Guzman, I said, before long, you're going to have to put a little sign on every corn dog. Please do not eat the stick. Because that's the kind of world that we're living in today. Let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. Praise God. Amen. I, I'm, I'm not so sure we need to preach tonight. Maybe we ought to just spar tonight. Praise God. Uh, anybody got got questions tonight amen that you would like yeah be seated be seated anybody got questions tonight perhaps you need an answer amen praise the lord hallelujah it's so good to have the hunts back amen praise god amen praise the lord i missed my amen corner this last sunday praise the lord amen you know you're supposed to respond to the word of god Amen. We thank God for the music and the singing, and it helps bring us into an atmosphere of worship. Amen. But you know, we're supposed to shout over the Word of God, too. We're supposed to worship more over the Word than we do anything else. Amen. Praise God. Nobody was saved by a piano. Nobody can be saved, amen, by uh, a, a guitar, amen, or drums, amen, praise God. But they can be saved by the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any questions tonight? Praise God. I'm just going to spar a little bit tonight. Amen. Yes, sis. Stand up and tell us your name. <laughs> okay, hold on. I need a runner. Thank you, brother. Praise God. There you go. Thank you. He told me the other day, the only time you'll ever catch him running is when the ice cream truck goes by his house. So in prophecy right now, we have all these different nations going on here. So where is Iran? You know, we know that the UK is the lion. The eagle is the U.S. Uh, Russia is the bear. Um, let's see who all is involved in this. Germany's the lepers. Ukraine, Ukraine. So where are some of these other countries that are involved in this whole mess in, in the Bible? We're not sure of all of the nations that are mentioned because there's going to be a ten-horned kingdom that's going to rise up in the last days, and uh, it will be over in the European common market um, uh, over there. And there's going to be one little horn that's going to surface through the ten and that little horn is going to be the Antichrist. When he rises up, he will slay three kingdoms. Amen. They will bow to him and give them his power. Uh, and so we don't know of all of the kingdoms that are going to be involved. However, there are some that are very descriptive. And it talks about the lion. It talks about the bear. It talks about the leopard. 
And then, of course, it talks about that ten-horned beast or kingdom, amen, that's going to be there. So I believe that Iran is going to play a very, very important part, amen, in uh, this, uh, these last-day prophecies because of uh, the, um, um, the war that's going on, amen, with Israel. Now, we know at the back of the book, the last battle to be fought is going to be the Battle of Armageddon. And that is going to be all of the nations that are coming against Israel. Now, not all of the nations will come against them, because there are some, amen, that are in league with the nation of Israel. Uh, there will be three nations that the Bible describes, and maybe even more, but three that I know of that are going to resist the Antichrist. That does not mean that everybody in that nation will not fall or bow to the Antichrist. But there will be three nations that are mentioned in the scriptures. One nation has to do with Jordan, Ammon, Jordan, and Moab, which is in Jordan. So the nation of Jordan is going to fight or resist the Antichrist. We know for sure in the book of Revelation chapter 12 that the nation of Israel is going to resist the uh, Antichrist. And then another nation uh, that's going to resist the Antichrist is going to be the United States. Some people don't realize that the United States is also recorded or mentioned in Revelations chapter 12. Because if you start reading at verse number 1 in Revelations chapter 12, you will find that there is a woman that has 12 stars upon her head who brought forth the man-child. It is speaking of Jesus Christ and the incarnation. But that woman with the 12 stars above her head is the nation of Israel, for those 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Bible says that a great dragon will, will seek to destroy her, and, uh, but she will be carried away, the scripture says, for a times, a time, and a half time. A time is one year, times is two years, and a half time is, is uh, a half a year. So that's for the space of three and a half years. Two other places in the scripture, it also describes the same event of the last days and the rule and the reign of the Antichrist, and, it will, and it's listed, and it will last for, 40, for the space of 42 months, which is three and a half years. And so the rule or the reign of the Antichrist will last for three and a half years. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to uh, belabor the point. So, in the nations that are involved in this, this last deal, look at this in Revelations 19 and verse number 15. It talks about um, one third of mankind is going to be destroyed in this war. Uh, the Bible talks about the battle of Gog and Magog in the book of Ezekiel. But in, this la or, but in this third world war, one third of mankind is going to be destroyed. Right now, the United States, or I'm sorry, the world, is uh, approaching right at 8 billion people on the face of the earth. So what's one third of 8 billion? That's about 2.7 billion people that's going to die in this catastrophic battle or war that's going to take place. Now, I believe it's going to be a nuclear war. And it's going to originate out of the Middle East because the Bible talks about the river Euphrates. And there are four angels that were bound in the river Euphrates. And those four angels at the sounding of the sixth trumpet will be loosed. You say that's Turkey? Okay, and so, well, if you'll look at, at the river Euphrates, it starts from the top from Turkey, and it comes all the way down through uh, Iraq, which is on the border of Iran. And so out of the Euphrates River, those four spirits, we know they're evil spirits because they are bound, okay? But they're going to be loosed, and they're going to bring death upon the face of this earth, and that will be the third world war, and one-third of mankind is going to be destroyed. So if you look at that, amen, it's going to start in the Middle East. Doesn't mean that it won't affect us. I believe it will affect many, many nations. Um, remember um, the dropping of the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it wasn't just the explosion, and then also the... Um, um, Chernobyl, Cher Chernobyl, excuse me, Chernobyl, yeah, Chernobyl there in uh, Russia, 
and uh, how that that exploded and that was their nuclear reactor and facility it wasn't so much the explosion that brought the devastation and the death toll high but it was the radiation that emanated from uh, that uh, explosion and the winds carried it across the seas and the lands and so a lot of times in the New Testament or in the book of Revelation when it talks about seas it's talking about people and so uh, that radiation fell into the waters. They had to kill over 100,000 uh, reindeer because that was their um, uh, mainstay of food over there and uh, because they were so infected uh, with the radioactivity. I'm just telling you that there is a scripture uh, that tells us in Revelations 13, and it talks about those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, they will take the mark and they will worship the beast. Now, when the Third World War happens, um, I don't know when, but I believe that what's going on right now is a precursor. Uh, the United States is already, and the League of Nations, is already asking Israel to cease fire, okay, and to stop what they're doing. Uh, but Benjamin Netanyahu, amen, has made the statement, and he says, it's just like Pearl Harbor on the United States and said, and you reacted to protect your nation and we're going to defend ours. And so they're not planning on pulling back. But here's the problem. They've already had nations in the uh, Arab world that have already convened and now they're talking about coming against the nation of Israel. Now Israel still has some allies, amen, but her greatest ally is not man. Her greatest ally is God, amen. So, brother, you got a question? Okay. So that's your greatest ally is God. Now, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you're not baptized in Jesus' name, and you're not living a life, amen, of holiness and separation from this world, the Bible says that when the Antichrist arises, it says those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, they will fall down and worship the beast, the Antichrist, and they will take his mark. Now, I, the reason why I'm bringing this out, because I have family members. And they say, and they're not where they need to be in God. We pray that they get right with God. We pray that they would see their need. Amen. But they say, well, you know, when the Antichrist rises up and when he begins to influence the nations and puts forth this decree of taking the mark, uh, I won't take it. I I'll, I'll just, uh, you know what, then, then I'll get right with God. The, the problem of it is, without the Holy Ghost, you're not going to make it. And, and I've had people say, well, Brother Cruz, I've been baptized in his name, filled with the Holy Ghost. But now they walk in a different walk, amen, and they're out in the world. And that's why the Bible says, pray that your name not be blotted out of the book of life. And so it's not enough to get it there. You've got to keep it there. Is that all right? Amen. Now, some people say, well, Brother Cruz, I know that I'm okay. Uh, let me tell you something about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's electrifying. Amen. When, when you get the Holy Ghost, it's the power from another world. It's resurrection power. It's Jesus Christ has just moved inside of your body. And the same power that brought Jesus out of the tomb is the same power. There's so much deception today. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a professor on end time events, but I do know some things, amen, praise God. And I don't want to be caught by surprise. That's why I want to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. This last Friday, we were coming down here to clean the church, and I try to get here before everybody. Um, you know, I do a little part. Amen. Not much, but, but I do a little part, and the biggest part that I do is I bring donuts. I bring donuts, and I make the coffee so that when they get done cleaning, we sit down, and we usually talk over the scriptures. Amen. But something wonderful happened this last Friday, and that doesn't happen all the time. But this last Friday, amen, I, I know I pray before I go to bed every night, and, and I pray in the morning, and I talk to the Lord, amen, before I start my day. But um, I went to Walmart to go and get some donuts. And uh, so I went in there, and I grabbed some donuts, amen, and, and uh, driving just from Walmart to the church, it wasn't but five minutes, maybe six minutes, the Lord stepped into that pickup truck. And I began to worship God, and I began to speak in other tongues all the way to the church. 
And I just said, Lord, you knew I needed that. Amen. Praise God. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one that has times like that where God just kind of steps in and bowls you over, amen, and there's a renewing and a refreshing, and the Bible talks about that we are supposed to be renewed day by day, amen. If it was good the first time you got it, it'd be good the second time you got it as well. So the Holy Ghost is real, and maybe we need to kind of talk a little bit about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, because without it, amen, you are subject to fall. Without the Holy Ghost, amen, you will take the mark, and you will worship the beast. And if you take the mark, amen, praise God, you are doomed. You have sold your soul out to the Antichrist. Now, this is important because the Holy Ghost, amen, is wonderful, the Bible says it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise God. It gives you the power to overcome the flesh and the world and Satan. Amen. Praise God. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. That's found in Romans chapter 6. But the Holy Ghost, amen, is, is the Spirit of God which is Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I shall no longer be with you to his disciples, but I shall be in you. It's one thing to have the Spirit of the Lord with you, but it's totally different to have the Spirit of the Lord in you. That's why in Colossians 1, it says it's Jesus Christ in you. Now, it's impossible to put a fleshly body inside of another body. That's why Jesus Christ was crucified. He rose again the third day. He ascended up into the heavens, and he said in John 14, 26, John 15, 26, he said, the comforter, amen, which I will send in my name, praise God. He was talking about coming back after his ascension, not to live with the church, but to be in the church, praise God, which is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ in you. It's an experience unlike any other, and it's real. The problem of it is not only is it real and genuine, but there is a lot of counterfeit today. There's a lot of people that have been deceived and told that they've been born again by shaking a preacher's hand, been born again by saying the sinner's prayer, been born again by making a creedal confession, but that's not how you're born again. In John 3 and 5, Jesus said, except a man be born again of water, that's water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and of the Spirit, that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So there's two parts. Parts, amen, praise God, that are so vital. Number one, it's your part, amen. You obey the scriptures and you get baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and God fills you with his spirit, which is called the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen. And you're born now of the spirit and now you are born again. And according to Romans chapter 8, somewhere around verse 14, whereby now we cry, Abba, Father, through the spirit of adoption. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen? And here's the best part. It's for everybody. In fact, amen, you not only need it, but God wants you to have it. Somebody get me Luke eleven thirteen. 13. We'll close with this. Amen. I'm going to show you, God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost was the first time the Holy Ghost was poured out. Amen. And the same thing that happened in Jerusalem happened in Judea, happened in Samaria, and happened in Caesarea Philippi. Praise God. Happened in Rome. Amen. Happened also in Colossae and also in Corinth. Amen. And that's where the churches, amen, were formed, amen, through the power of the Holy Ghost. In fact, you're not the church of God without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Luke chapter 11, amen, praise God. And we're going to back up a little bit because Jesus is talking to some uh, people out there. Amen. Back up to verse number, what did I say, verse 13? Uh, go to verse 10. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly. For uh, everyone I, that asketh receiveth. All right. And he that seeketh findeth. All right. Now, wait a minute. Everyone that asketh, amen, praise God. You have not because you ask not. Let me tell you how to get the Holy Ghost. Start seeking it with all of your heart. Start asking God, amen, for what he has promised. Because 
Peter said, For this promise is unto you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's Acts 2 and 39. So I'm trying to tell you, you not only need the Holy Ghost, I mean, you have to have the Holy Ghost, and God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Now watch, start again. For everyone that asketh, everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. Right. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. That means you need to pursue it. You're going to have to knock that door. You're going to have to ask and pray. You're going to have to seek it. Praise the Lord. It does not happen automatically. That's right. You must desire it. You must seek it. You must want it. Praise God. Hello, everybody. Say Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Keep reading. If a son shall ask bread. Now watch. Jesus, Jesus is talking to a crowd of people out there. And many of them, amen, are moms and dads that are out there. And so he's appealing to the crowd. He's fixing to bring forth, amen, one of the major issues or points, amen, in this discourse. Bring it on. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Yeah. Now there's fathers and mothers out there. If any of you shall what? Ask him what? For bread. For bread. Will he give him a stone? Right. Or Re if he ask a fish. If he asks for a fish. Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Will he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If he have an egg, amen, will he give him a scorpion? Praise God. Now, I could see every mother and father out there and say, why, no, I wouldn't do that. If my child, amen, wanted bread, I'd give him bread. I wouldn't give him a stone. If he wanted, amen, fish, I wouldn't give him, amen, a serpent. I'd give him fish. So you could see Jesus is appealing to the crowd, and he's talking to them, praise God. He said, I'm trying to show you, amen, amen, if you're, if you're not going to indict yourselves, amen, praise God, don't indict me. Let me show you how good. I am. I want you to have everything that I have promised, amen, in the Word of God. Keep reading now. If ye then, being evil. If ye then, being evil. Our Heavenly Father is not evil. He is good and very good. But if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Amen. If you, don't have the, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, amen, praise God, it's not God's fault. He's ready to pour it out, amen, praise God. How much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Amen. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Are we done? Yes, sir. Verse number 13, you, yes, you got that? that was it. Praise God, amen. If ye then being evil... Know how to give good gifts unto your children. Amen. Praise God. How much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? So the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, is not only wonderful and powerful, but you need it, amen, to go up in the rapture. All right? Okay. Amen. I know some of you know these scriptures. Romans 8 and 9. Amen. We're going to let you read this time. I'm sorry that I jumped the gun. You were just moving too slow. Romans 8 and 9. If ye, but ye are not in the flesh, ye are not of the flesh, but in the spirit, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, if the spirit of God dwell in you, that's the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus Christ. Don't be confused. Amen. Praise God. Jesus Christ is our heavenly father. He declared himself, amen, to be our father. The Bible says in Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yet the Bible says in, First Colossians, or in Colossians chapter 1 and verses 15 through 16, amen, it tells us that Jesus Christ created all things, amen. So Jesus Christ is the creator. Jesus Christ is God. Now, I don't, I don't have time, amen, to go through all of the scriptures, but Jesus Jesus Christ is our Heavenly Father. The Bible says, amen, in John 14 and verse number 9, I know we're fixing to get there to Romans 8 and 9, praise God, but it says, uh, Philip, amen, after they'd seen the works of Jesus Christ, Philip says unto Jesus, he says, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And, and Jesus looks at Philip, and he says, Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father, praise God. And then in John 10 and 30, Jesus makes a profound declaration, I and the Father are one. That's right. 
Don't let that fleshly body that God put on at incarnation confuse you and deceive you. God can put on flesh, amen, and never cease to be God. Can I get an amen? So God robed himself in flesh so there could be a supreme sacrifice, praise God, that could take care of the sin issue. I couldn't die for you. Sister Ward, you got a question? Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad you're in agreement, praise God, because if you're not, we'll straighten you up. <laughs> Amen, praise God. So Jesus is the Father, right. and everybody knows that Jesus is the Son. Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 21, it talk, talks about the incarnation, the birth of the Virgin Mary, and the Bible says, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Praise God. So you've got God that became a man without ceasing to be God. You've got God, the creator, who became the creature without ceasing to be the creator. Mm -hmm. Don't let that body, amen, praise God, that flesh confuse you, praise God, because Jesus was God. That's why in John chapter 10 and John chapter 8, they took up stones to stone Jesus. Watch. Jesus said, for which good work do you seek to stone me? And they said, not for a good work, amen, but because thou being a man makest thyself God, amen. They had it backwards. He was God that made himself man, but never ceased to be God. That's why the winds and the waves had to obey him, because he was God. The Bible says God has the winds in his fist, praise the Lord. God has all of the waters in the hollow of his hand. Jesus Christ controlled the elements. They knew who was speaking, praise God. So Jesus is the Father. He is the Son. And he is the Holy Ghost. That's why he said, the comforter which has come in my name, the Holy Ghost, will I send, amen, unto you. So Jesus came in spirit form to live inside of his church, inside of his people. Amen. You ready? Jesus, Father of creation. He became the Son in redemption. He is the Holy Ghost in regeneration of being born again of a brand new life. Okay, Psalms 51 says, you were born in sin, shapen in iniquity. That's why you got to be born again. Right. Right. Amen? Because if you only have one birth, you're going to die twice. You're going to die physically, spiritually. The second death is the white throne judgment. But if you've been born twice, you're only going to die once. You'll never stand at the white throne judgment. Amen. Praise God. So the Holy Ghost, amen, is Jesus Christ in you. Right. Amen. In spirit form. Right. Amen. Praise God. And you must have the Holy Ghost. Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God If the spirit you. of God be in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He is none of his. You're none of his. You're not his child, amen. You're not his son or his daughter, praise God. Now, that's very definitive, amen. We like to define the word of the Lord, but he said you're none of his. But thank God, amen, we can become his people, amen. Praise God. We can become the child of God or a son of God, amen, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of water in Jesus' name for the remission of our sins. Praise God. Now, read verse number 11. We're fixing to go home. Number 11? Yep. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Now, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. Dwell in you. Dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal, mortal bodies by his spirit. By his spirit. That dwelleth in you. That dwelleth in you, not with you. You must receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Brother, read that again because there was a verse in there and I'd like to attack it. But if the least. spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now watch this, praise God. Amen. Jesus says, no man takes my life from me. He said, I lay it down. And he said, and I pick it up, praise God. 
So I'm trying to tell you, amen, praise the Lord, it wasn't another spirit. It wasn't another God, amen, that raised Jesus. He says, amen, I lay my life down. He said, I'm going to pick it back up. God actually set, amen, his time clock for 72 hours. And three days later, Jesus Christ came up out of the grave. He raised himself up from the grave. Amen. Because he's God. Because he's God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you need the Holy Ghost. All right? The Holy Ghost was first poured out, but it was prophesied in the Old Testament. I believe it's Isaiah 28 and 11. It says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye shall cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Now watch this. Praise God. Amen. And then you've got Joel chapter 2 and 28. For in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. He said even on your handmaidens and on your servants. Amen. That God would pour out. That meant that the Holy Ghost was for everybody. Amen. Regardless of what position or station of life that you are in, the Holy Ghost is for everybody. You must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, how am I going to get the Holy Ghost? When you read the Bible, praise God, it's God that gives the Holy Ghost. I cannot give you the Holy Ghost. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse number 11, in John chapter 1 and verse number 29, and Luke chapter 3, and I forget which verse it is, in three places, John the Baptist, it is recorded in the word of the Lord, John is telling each and every one of them, Behold the Lamb of God, for he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Not John, not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not Peter, James, or John, because they can't give you the Holy Ghost, but Jesus Christ is going to give you his spirit. Amen. 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 Praise God. Begin to seek it with all your heart. It's promised to you. God wants you to have the Holy Ghost. God wants you to be filled with his spirit. Praise the Lord. God is trying to get a church ready for the rapture, amen, because Jesus Christ is coming soon. And so point number one, it starts with repentance. You never bury anybody until they die first. Right. And repentance is a death. It is. Amen. I said repentance is the death. That means you're dying out to yourself and you're saying, I no want to longer live, amen, for me. I want to live for God, amen. And you start doing what you're supposed to do. You start putting away some things. You start putting on some things, amen. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, he says you need to learn, you need to cease from evil and you must learn to do well. It's not enough, amen, to say, well, I don't smoke and I don't drink and I don't chew and I don't go with the girls that do. That's not enough to stop, amen, praise God, what you're doing. You need to start doing and obeying the Word of God. And so you repent of your sins and you die out to yourself. The next thing you've got to do, you've got to go through a burial because you always bury the dead. Hello? Amen. And that's what water baptism is. You're burying the old man, the old you. Amen. Praise God. Now watch this. The Bible says in Colossians 2 and 12, Romans 6 and 4, for we are buried with him in baptism. So baptism is a watery grave. That's where you're going to bury the old man. That's why the Bible says to be baptized so that you can arise to walk in newness of life. You just buried the old man, and you're starting a brand new walk in a brand new life with God. Amen? Praise God. And so when you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're going down, amen, and when you come up, when you're baptized in Jesus' name, the blood that was shed for you at Calvary comes upon you at the mention of the name of Jesus. No title, no title, amen, can wash away sins. Only the name. Philippians chapter 1, trying to think where it is. Somebody help me. Verse number 9, or it's Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. I'm so sorry. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father because he is God. 
He is the Father. When you go down in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed for you at Calvary is now applied to your life. And that's why when you come up out of watery grave of baptism, amen, you're coming to walk in newness of life. Why? Your past, every sin that has ever marred your soul or stained your life is totally washed away so you can arise to walk in newness of life. I don't have a past anymore, praise God, but I do have a beginning and a future with God. That's why you need to be baptized in Jesus' name because that's how you get your sins washed away in Acts 22 and 16 and says, Why tarriest thou? Arise, calling upon the name of the Lord, and be baptized, washing away your sins. Amen. Your sins. Isaiah 1 and 18. Amen. Praise God. I, that's all right. We'll, we'll skip that one. Amen. Where were we, brother? We're closing. We were in Romans uh, 8, 8 and 11. 11. Yes, sir. 8 and 11. All right. Praise God. So you do your part. God's going to do his part. Amen. Now, if you want the Holy Ghost, you can have it tonight. You don't have to be, you don't even have to be in a church setting. You don't have to be at a camp meeting, get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Nobody even has to lay hands on you to get the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? Now, we'll find that in the scriptures. That in Acts chapter 8, amen, Peter and John came down from Jerusalem. They just had a revival, amen, in Samaria. That's what I was going to preach tonight. Now watch this. And they had a Holy Ghost revival. And yet, they did not receive the Holy Ghost. And Jerusalem heard that, that Samaria had received the word. Now watch, they send Peter and John, and the Bible says somewhere around verse number 16 of, uh, of Acts chapter 8, and it says that they laid hands on them, watch, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is not transferred. You can't give it. Only God can give it. Amen. What you're doing is mixing your faith with their faith. Amen. Praise God. And praying for a channel to be open that God will fill them with the Holy Ghost. Now they got the Holy Ghost through the laying on of hands. But on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, nobody was laying hands on anybody and they all got the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 10, amen, uh, while Peter is preaching to the house of Cornelius, the Bible said, while he yet preached the word, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that believed. And they received the Holy Ghost while the preacher was preaching. That happened here. Brother Lauren, Lawrence Cumley? Lauren, Brother Lauren Cumley. Amen. I'll never forget Sunday morning. Man, I hadn't been preaching but maybe two or three minutes. He came up. Amen. Now, we'd been dealing with him for a while. He had been making progress. He had been seeking the Holy Ghost. We baptized him in Jesus' name. He didn't get the Holy Ghost right away. Whoa, I feel like telling you that does not mean, amen, that you're a bad preacher because they don't get the Holy Ghost under your ministry. Because Philip preached it, praise God, and they had a Holy Ghost rally, amen, and, and a revival, and they didn't get it under Philip, but Peter and John came down and they got it. It wasn't because Philip was ineffective or he wasn't spiritual. Now watch this. Amen. Praise God. Where was I? Brother Lauren Cumley. And so we had been preaching more than a couple of minutes, and all of a sudden, Brother Cumley, he's sitting back here, and there's a tug of the Spirit. Huh? No, he came right up here. Help me, sis. He came up here to be prayed for. He had cancer. And he came up here to be prayed for. And during the prayer service, he began to receive, receive the Holy Ghost. And he spoke in tongues through your entire sermon until everybody had left. He was still speaking in tongues. So, okay, so we had an altar call. He came up. And he lifted up his hands, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Right Nobody had laid hands on That's him. Right. But he spoke in tongues the whole time I preached. I just kept right on preaching. I figured if Peter could do that to Cornelius, I could do it to him. And he received the Holy Ghost, praise God, amen, through the preached Word of God or through prayer. You begin to seek the Lord. You can get the Holy Ghost, amen. It, you get the Holy Ghost in a foot washing. Amen. I did. You get the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost running to an altar. 
Nobody laid hands on me. Nobody prayed with me, praise God. Before I got to the altar, God filled me with the Holy Ghost running to an altar. I'd made up my mind. I'd been seeking the Holy Ghost. And I said, God, this is it. I got so desperate. I said, I'm not leaving this place. He said, you can shut the doors down, but I'm not leaving till you fill me with the Holy Ghost because I got to have it. And when I took off running to the altar, when the altar call was made, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost on a back pew. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost at an altar. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost coming up out of a watery grave of baptism, amen. When you seek the Holy Ghost with all of your heart, amen, the Bible says, then shall you find him. God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Amen, praise God. Now, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Ghost is nothing spooky. It is wonderful. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to say, why didn't I get this before? How come nobody ever told me this before? Amen. Praise God. And there are people today that have been deceived and told that they have something that they never, ever received. They have churches today that try to teach you to speak. Oh, that's another thing. Are you ready? When you receive the Holy Ghost... You shall speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. It's not a language you learn. Amen. Praise God. Because it's a language that you don't know. Amen. And what God is doing, and you'll find out in the Scriptures, they were worshiping and praising and magnifying the Lord. So it's good to praise him. It's a good way to get it. We've had people get the Holy Ghost washing dishes. Amen. Just because they got serious about their salvation and said, I want everything that God has for me. You want to make sure that you have the real, genuine gift of the Holy Ghost because it is so real and so powerful. You will never be the same. Let's put our hands together. Let's clap unto the Lord. All right. Amen. Let's all stand in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Any questions that I didn't clarify? John 3 and 8. Amen. Praise God. Get John 3 and 8. Never mind. I'll quote it. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. It's talking about the Holy Ghost. The wind bloweth where it listeth. It'll go wherever, amen, it's going to work. God wants to work. He wants to work in this house. He wants to fill people with the Holy Ghost right here. Amen. Praise God. And thou will hear a sound, and that sound will be the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Let's sing before the Lord. Time is.
everybody saved. We want everybody ready for the rapture, for the sound of the trump of God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I admonish you. Amen. I plead with you. Praise God. Amen. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. Because God wants to fill you with his most precious gift, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest thing that can happen to you, happen to you amen. This side of that world is to receive the Holy Ghost. Put your hands together one last time. Let's thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you have the Holy Ghost, get it again. Amen. Go back to the altar. Get under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Shake somebody's hand. Hey, come. Do me a favor this Sunday. Come with an expectation, amen, of receiving from God. God is going to heal someone this weekend. God's going to fill someone with this weekend. Someone's going, oh, thank you, sister. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. I'm so thankful. Praise God. Amen. That sister reminded me. Amen. This Sunday, amen, or this Saturday night, roll your clocks backward an hour. You get an extra hour of sleep, but don't be late for church. Amen. Roll your clocks backward one hour Saturday night. All right. Sunday morning, church at 1030. Now watch this. We're having a fellowship. We're going to have a bonfire. We're going to have a cookout on, on Sunday, but something has changed. Okay. Instead of coming back at six, we're going to come back at five because of the time change. We want to make sure that we have plenty of light to enjoy the fellowship and to eat enough burgers and hot dogs. Is that all right? Amen. So five o'clock, we'll mention it also on um, Sunday morning. But now listen to me. Don't forget to roll your, now if you forget to roll your clocks ahead, just come early. That's all right with me. I promise I'll beat you here. Amen. You're dismissed in the love of Jesus. Praise you. Yeah, corn dogs. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sis. Amen. There goes our corn dogs.